Thanks for your company. The details now. Coach Chrissy Apias says the VAR technology must be used from the group stages of the African Cup of Nations tournament. He made these comments at a post-match conference shortly after the Black Stars lost to Tunisia in a 4-5 penalty shootout. There's more in this report after which I'll come back with some analysis. It's still kind of looking to get this one into the box, but if, well, the whistle are really gone. Andre Ayo will not be lucky this time to get the goal, but still contesting that one. Now, that was the goal that many thought could have safely secured Ghana's place at the quarterfinals. But the South African coach, Victor Gomez, disallowed it to the disappointment of many. In fact, I'm very disappointed. Serious, my brother. By the end of the game, fact, what happened? Our, our referee was not the best. At all. When asked about the referee's performance, here's what Coach Chrissy Apia said at a post-match conference. He should look at the video again and then judge himself. Ghana would bounce back in the game in at the 90th minute Egyptian with an own goal from the Tunisian side. The... Egyptian Harbin, it's in! That is an amazing own goal! And Ghana back in the game! It is game on! Coach Kwesi Apia says that VAR technology it must be introduced from the group shot. stages. You know, sometimes along the line, if you, you lose point because of uh, the mistake of a referee, uh, I don't think it's uh, to be the best competition. So in future, if you know, calves can start from onset, you know, I don't think it should cost or you know, to do anybody harm. Um, at the end of it. Uh, to benefit everyone, you know, so that any decisions that are being taken, you know, uh, the referee will be sure uh, as to what he takes. In the end, Ghana lost in a 4-5 penalty shootout. This result means that Ghana's quest to end the close to four decades of a trophy drought stands postponed to 2021. Indeed, it was a painful moment for many Ghanaians. And I'll be bringing you analysis and uh, have a very thorough conversation on Ghana's <coughs> campaign in this year's AFCON. Uh, but for now, let me bring you some interviews my colleague, Benedict Owusu, had with some journalists and Ghana's ambassador to uh, Egypt after the match yesterday. I don't think it's been a good tournament for the Black Stars. Four games, we won only one. We drew four, uh, the, th the, the, the three games. And the game today, honestly, I felt the Tunisians looked like they wanted it more than us. I felt we were hard done by the referee with that disallowed goal of Dede Ayu. The team in itself did not play the way we had wanted them to play, with that kind of fighting spirit. As a team that wants to annex the trophy after 37 years, we didn't see that in this Black Stars team. It was a very difficult time to speak, but I think... If for nothing at all, we got to say a big thank you to all the Ghanaians and people who have prayed and wish us well. I mean, we, we put our best from the government to every one of us here on the ground. A uh, big thank you actually to my staff at the mission who have had very little sleep throughout this period. I think we had one of the best uh, squads in terms of player quality coming into the competition, so they really uh, was a lot there for the team to do well. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't um, always work out that way, does it? Um, and now we are out. And I think that, you know, if you look back at uh, all of the games that we have played, you can't say you're exactly surprised, Benedict, because you have to be honest with yourself and say that we have been piss poor, uh, you know, from day one. Uh, you know, people can say that we improved in certain games, but, you know, against Benin, against Cameroon, even Guinea-Bissau, that first half was the poorest I've seen in a long time. We paid the price uh, for poor coaching. I think it's one of the most disappointing games I've seen in the last five years. Um, we virtually have laboured throughout the entire competition and it all came crashing down on us in this particular competition. I, 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 contrary, I thought we had luck because we shouldn't have... I mean, gotten the equaliser we got, and then from there also, um, 
we had an opportunity to, or we had opportunities to go on and win it. It didn't come through. It's been another disappointing campaign. I haven't seen Ghana win the African Cup of Nations in my lifetime. I had real belief that we could go on to win it. I was expecting the Black Stars to show us a bit more. I mean, because if you compare the quality we have in our midfield, it's, it's, it's almost better than many other midfields we have in the, uh, in the competition at the moment. But unfortunately, we just couldn't control uh, the midfield any time we played in any of the games that we played in. And so it is really, really difficult for me. I don't think we should have lost to this Tunisian side. I mean, it's not, it's not a side that should beat Ghana in any game at all. And um, to think that we've beaten better Tunisian side and one of the worst Tunisian sides to beat us is, is one of the biggest problems for me. But I mean, I think that, you know, a lot, uh, a lot of blame will go to the coach. A lot of blame will go to some of the players who didn't turn up when they were needed the most. And um, a couple of them will also be looking at, um, uh, you know, hanging their boots and, you know, hanging their national jerseys for other players to also come into take up the mantle. That was from Ismailia, Egypt, uh, my colleague Benedict sent us that. But right here in the studio, I've got um, George Addo Jr., who's been a regular and is a regular on the show. And we've got Fifi Anaman as well. Uh, he's a sports journalist. You join us. And also from Ismailia, Egypt, uh, Benedict may join us, uh, but let me just start with you, George. Mm. A lot of your colleagues have shared their thoughts. They thought um, we've beaten better Tunisian sides. They actually think that we should leave the blame at the coach's doorstep. Do you agree? Well, I think it's multifaceted, for sure. And let us all calm down. I think <laughs> uh, when the last stars lose and a knocked out run of 16, ha, challenge that. You know, everybody should <laughs> calm down. And, and let's take this gradually. I, 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 let's start with the first point. I don't think Tunisia surprised us in the game. We knew what they were going to do, and they did exactly that. Because they have been draw experts in this competition. You can talk about the likes. But we've also been draw experts. We've drawn how many games? We, we won one game at least and against Guinea Bissau. And, and we, we drew, drew two. Two or three, yes. but including in, this one. But in living with what they have done in the competition so mm. far, because I thought we lifted our performance against Guinea Bissau, and it looked like when we played against Cameroon, we also looked like a team that was yet to go to the next year. But for Tunisia, they were just going to come up and do what they've been doing. So mm. from our perspective, we knew what to expect from them. And they came out and delivered. And that was it. Um, for me, I think it's just back to it. We probably failed to go straight to it and speak the truth. I don't think we had a good team uh, for this tournament. Somehow, there was a lot of hope. People wanted to support this team. We're praying for the team. And we're hoping that things will work out. Things don't always work out. Mm. But the truth is, we just got what we deserve. All right, let me, I'll come out to you shortly. Uh, Fifi, are, are we being too hard? In the game of football, you either win or lose. So why does this appear to be... A really difficult cross to carry for a lot of us. Benes, thanks for having me. I, I think that essentially what has happened is a case of people seeing a trend of worrying results and then having it finally manifest in a catastrophic loss as people would want us to believe it was. I mean, it was a narrow loss for me, but if you look at the trend, that we had, especially in the group stages. Remember our first game against um, Benin, mm. then our second game against Cameroon, then our third against Guinea-Bissau. The first half, specifically against Guinea-Bissau, was one of the worst Black Stars performances that most of us had seen in a long time. And so a lot of people saw problems with the team, and they sort of wanted it to manifest. People feel that the coach, especially, is unpopular because they feel tactically it's not sound, they feel it's not confident and all that. And so. It was basically something of something manifesting, you understand? You see something, it's not manifesting, you're waiting for it to, and then it finally happens and everybody just goes haywire. So it's very normal what is happening. I think we should allow people to vent, <laughs> people to, you know, let their emotions out. But there are a lot of negatives and positives. I started from the negative because obviously mm. this is the first time we've come out of an Afcon at this stage. Six times we made it to the semifinals consecutively. So this on any scale, is not acceptable. Now, for the coach, I believe you are going to be asking me about it, so let me just jump straight into it. Um, Kwesi Apia was given a clear task to build a team in the two years that he was going to be in charge and also to win the Akron. You understand? So now he's gone to Egypt, he's failed to win the Akron. So it's not a question of whether we should drop him or not. I think he knows what he has to do. He has to resign. You know, he was given something to do, he failed at it. So that's that, that. That is not to say 
that he's not a good coach. He may not be up there yet, but I think he made certain errors that a lot of us saw. I was always on your platform saying that the end would justify the means. You know, tactics are only as good when they work out in the end. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yesterday, it did not work out for him. And so I believe um, as a man who understands fair play and all that, he will own up and then accept the responsibility for the loans. But then, you know, over the last two years, he's done something. He's introduced some players into the squad. Of course, in terms of play on the field, a lot of people have complained that there's not been any defined or pattern that you could see and say, okay, this is a coach who is in charge of the side. Okay. Now that we are out of the tournament, this makes sense. Right? Mm. I think a lot of people, um, they are justified in most of their criticism as it is. Mm. Let's come to the game proper, George. Mm. Uh, Wakaso. I think deserved the man of the match, yes. and he won the man of the match. Yeah. But another issue, which has become quite topical, also because Coach Kusiapia has raised concerns, has to do with that goal that was disallowed. And his argument is, let's have the VAR from the beginning. I don't remember which game it was, but there was also another game in the Afcon that also had quite a controversial situation like that, which I believe a VAR could have satisfied both sides. So, let's talk about the refereeing and that goal that was disallowed. Uh, two things. One, before the tournament started, every country knew what the game or the rules were for the game. And it was stated clearly that the VAR will be used at the quarterfinal stage. So everybody knew that. Mm -hmm. So there's no point going to have uh, an interview or in a press conference and say that you wish there was VAR. In fact, no, he, it did well. he hoped that it no, was VAR, it would change anything. Yes, no, he's I mean, actually encouraging, I agree. encouraging. It will come. to say that it should. But because George, of World Cup, remember, because of World Cup experience and all of that with that Champions League game, they want to take steps and they also will explain to you that they want to do this gradually um, getting into the game. The some, Women's World some, Cup didn't do it yeah, gradually. Yeah, but that's the Women's they World Cup. The that was, that's, that's the Women's World Cup. That was done by what, FIFA. What is so until we have so Cup explained to us what their challenges are. Yes, until we have Cup explained to us what their challenges are well uh, that's a different thing but for now you can only hope that it will get better the air was in use and that was it and um, come come to the question of the goal now I, i'm sorry this is how i saw it and i've had a lot of people chase me out for it i thought this was an offside now in communicating why that decision was taken the referee i think did not Con I mean, um, consult his assistant referee on why he flagged. All right, George, because, yeah. tell me at what point you thought that was an, an Yeah, because I, Andy, Yadom, Andy Yadom headed that ball. And once he headed that ball back, Thomas Pate was offside. And a lot of reviews have been done. For those of you who kept on watching, a lot of reviews have been done. The explanation I'm getting from, from um, the, the grounds is that the referee did not consult his assistant on why he flagged and said it was a, a foul ball. There was nothing like a handball, for sure. But... Thomas Party was offside. So I, I wish we don't really talk about this so much. And um, we failed to handle the game. We failed to um, create chances from open play. Thomas we failed to Pate control was it. Offside? Yes, that yes. when that header came in. You take it from when that header came in. So you look at it from when Andy Yadon brought the ball but back in. But isn't that a rule about the ball in motion and who is getting to? No, it's clear. I mean, I, you know, people go about this and they're <laughs> trying to let make me it. Take, let me plus. take Fifi's thoughts on this. Fifi, so. <laughs> Controversial <laughs> moment for Ghana. This could have changed the dynamics of the so game. So if he can stop the video, no, if he can stop the no, video when Andy Adam is heading, no. If he can stop the video when Andy Adam is heading, no. Andy Adam is heading the ball. There's a there's a there's a Tunisian player directly behind Pate. So you should see the picture and see the lines. You well, let me get Fifi's yeah. thoughts on this. Fifi was right. a fair that decision is, on know, the side of Ghana. You see, like I, I think I agree with George when he says that it was an offside. But the referee certainly erred in communicating why he had disallowed the goal. Now, he kept, you know, guess, um, gesturing yes, to his hand. Handle, yeah. or he was pointing to his hand, saying that it was a handball. And so everyone else thought that he had disallowed the goal because of a handball. Then the replays came in, and we saw that Thomas Tepate arguably was in an offside position. But I think we can, we can go back and forth as to whether VAR could have, you know, bailed us out, whatever it was. But it's a football game. You don't expect everything to go in your favor. You have to do what you can and make sure that you get the result. Unfortunately for Ghana, it wasn't so. So I don't think um, our elimination uh, of after 2019 yeah. can, can be goal. blamed on this particular decision. I don't think so. Go, yeah. All right, Fifi, go. so you say, you, you <laughs> say it's a game of football. You have yeah. to do what you can. Do you, think, yes. do you think the players did what they could at the time and did it to the best of their capacity? 
Benis, so throughout this tournament, and I'm sure if many people would want to be honest, they would admit that most of our players did not come to the party. And no pun intended, but Thomas Tell party was non-existent for most of the tournament. Of course, by that goal that he scored against Guinea Bissau. Um Jordan Ayu, of course, turned up. Andre Ayu, you know, he was a bit on and off as a captain, of course. A lot of people expected more of him. A lot of talk has been on Waka, so he was absolutely phenomenal yesterday. But in other games, wasn't as effective. And so I think a lot of the players should also see themselves as part of the problem. I mean, it's easy to just say, oh, it's the coach's fault. But if you go out there, you put in the national team shirt, you should always give 110%. Um, as to whether they give 110% will always be a subject of debate. But like I said, results will always justify the means. And the results did not go in our favor. So the players obviously should be talked about. But yes, the coach mm. should respect uh, should accept the ultimate responsibility because everything stops with him. He's the one with whom the back stops. George, what next for us? I mean, uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at a, a very disappointed um, nation. Yeah. Let me put it that way. Though some uh, people living in my area were actually excited. Tunisia won. Yeah. I was surprised when I heard the, the the scream at the first goal. I was like, "What's happening? Here? Am I in Tunisia or Ghana?" <laughs> you know. So, but but that's what it is. But what next for us? Um, I think it's good that you, you had that feeling that you were surprised that there's some people who were happy when Tunisia scored. I think we have a divided football front and we need to unify this football front. We need to know the next step, I mean, in organizing our football because I think we're in a bit of a mess. To know that we are still not playing a league, we don't have a league that is running, it's just not good enough. We need to start it all again. Some teams were knocked out, but I, th I thought they went out with something. Mm. Cameroon went out with a good team, Morocco mm. went out with a good team. They can come back, you know, next two years. But for us, we need a true um, a rebuilding. Some players in the national team probably have to finally make way. The mm. coach himself has to make way. We need to start afresh from the top to the bottom, starting mm. from administration. All right, I need, we need to start afresh, but I have to end this conversation here. Thank you so much, Fifi, uh, for coming and joining the program. Thank you, George. Unfortunately, we couldn't get to uh, Benedict from Ismailia. We'll see if we can do that in subsequent bulletins.